Hi, uh, welcome to live stream coffee. No, it's not live. I should stop saying that. It is, in fact, pre-recorded coffee uh, with Pastor Dan. Uh, and I have got uh, my largest assortment of special guests today. Um, I'll explain later why they're all here, but other than they're all members of All Saints. Uh, and um, But I want to welcome everybody who's listening in Uh it's been a good week around here, kind of exciting. Uh, we're getting ready for vacation. Do you guys have anybody who's going to be in vacation Bible school? Well, not in it. I have help. My kids are going to be helping. Okay, great. All right. So we'll give a little plug for VBS later on. Uh, but uh, it's fun. And also today, uh, maybe you saw something on Facebook. We're recording this on Thursday. But uh, our team from the social ministry went out to uh, one of our newest refugees in the state, uh, They've started admitting refugees from overseas and Lutheran Social Services works with the U.S. government. And so there is a woman uh, on her own uh, with her two young children. I believe they're four and five. And she's coming from Somalia, a war-torn country, uh, and settling here. And uh, it was just so inspiring to talk to her. And uh, after everything she's gone through, she's just got this amazingly positive attitude as people are explaining everything like that there is a laundry room and yes you have to dry as well as wash and you have to have a key and this key looks like that key and by the way let's look in the mailbox now you have to figure out which things are junk mail that you can throw away and which things are bill that you better pay um so uh and she had just this amazing attitude uh for that so started off really positive so I'm kind of peppy today because of her. Uh, but uh, I should uh, introduce my guests uh, right now. Uh, and their names are on the screen. I think uh, everybody's here. Uh, so uh, uh, why don't you introduce yourselves? Uh, so Matthew, let's start with you. Yeah, my name is Matthew Roberts. I've been a member of All Saints for more than 10 years uh, at that. I think it's been 14. But Now, I my experience is people always underestimate by half. <laughs> So I'm suspecting you've been here 20 years. What's the earliest you could have possibly been here? Hannah was baptized at all Oh, did, did Matthew, did Matt freeze? Oh no. Yes, we got a frozen, a first time ever here. We have a frozen person. Uh, well, sorry about Matt. We'll get back to you when we when you unfreeze. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, Kristen, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kristen Williams, a member at All Saints. Uh, I'm trying to think about how long we've been there. I guess it's coming up on four, or it's right at four years, I think, because we joined just before my, uh, the year before my daughter started confirmation. And I was here before you, right? Yes, you were there okay. before all us. Right, all right, now, now so. I'm here for you. <laughs> so, but yeah. we, we have a long history of being uh, members of ELCA congregations uh, throughout the Valley, both my husband and I. We, in fact, we met in confirmation class at an ELCA Lutheran Church in Phoenix. And that's when we met. <laughs> Matthew, we're coming back to you because uh, you, you froze up there for us. By the way, it was a good look while you froze. Hopefully. <laughs> it's usually not. It's like. <laughs> yeah, mine is always. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, so really 10 years? Uh, more than 10 years, but I after five years, it's all. All right. So you, how really are your kids? Uh, how old are my, your kids? Oldest kid is is fifteen. Uh, so she was five. Yeah. And no, she was actually she was born during our confirmation class, not our confirmation class, our membership class. So that's fifteen. Um, years. So that's fifteen years. Wow. <laughs> I think this gives you seniority over all of us. <laughs> Probably, it's the longest time I've ever been a member of anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Even Costco. <laughs> Right, yeah, beats my Costco sample, all of that, okay. much, much longer. All right, uh, and Rob, how about you? Uh, so my, my name is Rob Elsholtz. Uh, we've been members of the uh, the church now a little over five years. So we're excited. We're excited to uh, can be contributing members as well. So now, uh, did you come before or after me? Because I'm about before. to five too. Yeah, before. before. Okay. All right, all right, cool. Yeah, uh, and then uh, uh, the, you're at the beach. I am at the beach. I am in that this virtual backer, but I am at the beach. We're in beautiful San Clemente yeah. this week. So we are, we escaped the heat. So we're, we're very excited about that. So 
he and I were talking before you guys came on, and that's actually the beach that my parents took me to when I was like four years old. Uh, first time I remember starfish. So, oh, okay. Uh, well, somebody else is trying to knock us off. I don't know if this is going to happen, but uh, uh, we could get cut off at any time. This is another exciting moment here at the church. <laughs> All right. Well, we should get into some interesting conversation before we get cut off here. Um, what we have in common is that we are, four of us, are four of a group, I think we're about 11 or 12, uh, that are on the strategic planning team for the church. And who wants to take a stab at explaining what the heck that is? Who wants who wants to go first there? Yeah. So this doesn't happen with yeah. just two people. Then the other yeah. person talks yeah. at this point. <laughs> Rob, you go for it. Okay. Man. So yeah. yeah, so I'll so we we've been asked to be to come together and help out with building out a strategic a strategic plan for the future of the church and built off of pillars. So you everybody I'll I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal a little bit of your thunder here, Pastor Dan. We're gonna yeah. be sending out a survey. Yeah. And the survey, there's the paper copy of the survey. You're also going to be receiving a survey monkey as well. And it's really going to help us as a team move forward with building out the strategic plan. Um, so when you go through, I know there's some there's some very valuable questions there. We have some, some very good discussions and good thought behind each one of these. Um, and really, that's, that's, that's kind of the 30,000 foot view. And if, who would like to go into maybe the 15 of the 10,000 foot view. Oh, that's a challenge. And it is a challenge. Well, that the most important part of this whole thing is it's an opportunity for everyone who comes to the church to really tell us what it is you like, what it is you, you're you seeing that you love or want to see more of, and what it is that you're not seeing that you'd like to see once in a while. So, or maybe all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, you get to tie the bow on it. Oh, you're, you're muted. I thought I unmuted. Um, so after the survey it, results come in, there'll be more process to it. It's, this isn't the end of the process. This is where we will then uh, come back together as a team and bring other people on board to discuss those results and uh, probably send out a second survey that has maybe some more focused information and then again be taking that to uh, the groups at the church, uh, the different ministries, and making certain that everybody has a buy-in. So this isn't a small group that's just going to make a decision and send it out there. This The goal is for this to be a living, breathing document and plan for uh, us as a community. And I'm really excited that I get to be a part of this, and I um, look forward to all of your participation as we move forward. You know, uh, uh, so some people will have seen by now uh, the video that uh, uh, Matthew and Christian recorded. Uh, and um, for those of you who watched that a little bit behind the scenes here, basically what I was doing them was asking them questions from the survey and they were just sharing things from their own heart um, about some of the stuff that would, would that they were love about the church or would love to see happen at the church. Uh, and just that little small conversation, I have to say, um, that's been brewing in my head all week, and I've started to see connections with things that I haven't noticed uh, in the, you know, the, the, in the five or six years I've been here. Um, and uh, so it's it's really fun how the way I think we're all getting a chance to sort of put on the table things that we didn't really know that maybe we have a passion for. And Kristen, wait, I asked you at the end of that uh, to say a prayer, and the words that jumped out for me when you were praying is that you're asking God to give us the gift of discernment and courage. Uh, and I think that's that's everything uh, about this. But am I right uh, that uh, is this the first time that you've kind of had a seat at a table like this uh, at All Saints? At All Saints, yes. How about uh, for Matthew and Robert? So Rob, 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 Rob which one do you like better? As long as you call my name, I'm okay. With right, so. right. I will. I will alternate. <laughs> so I mean, I 
there have been moments here and there. I, this is the first one I, I took for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time the seat was offered and I took it. But uh, yeah, it's not something that I think happens enough in organizations, regardless of what they are, let alone the church, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is no. This is the first time with that All Saints. This is something I do for as a profession. So it, it when I think when the calling came, it, it made a lot of sense to yeah. uh, to to help out with this. And it's something I'm very passionate about because I, I think that when you do anything in life, that you should be you should feel passion behind it. Um, and it, I I'm really excited that you know we we all bring a different background in the group. So when we have conversations it's very exciting to hear everybody's passion regarding uh, regarding the church, which is very refreshing. And it's very, it's very uplifting. Um, and it, it's, it's interesting because we're in meetings and we're supposed to be going an hour and we're an hour and a half in. And so, you know, and we have our, the consultants we're working with, they go, they go, Oh, well, is this okay? And it's like, this is okay. Yeah. Cause we're, we're here for a purpose. Yeah. So, I think I think just the the group dynamic that we have and the thought that was put behind putting the group together, uh, it's an exciting. This is a very exciting time. And I have to say uh, that the title "Strategic Planning Team" sounds pretty dull. I've had so much fun so far in these first few meetings, and like um, each time, it has um, got me more excited about the future here. So thank you guys for doing that. I should give a little shout out. Uh, I got I wrote them down on paper because I, I couldn't remember them. Um, so I got I had everybody so on the team. Dave Check uh, is our chair, and uh, he's he's just perfect for this because he recognizes a classroom full of honor students, <laughs> and so he's 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 letting us all uh, put out our energy and keeping good notes, and then saying, "No, I can connect up. Don't worry, keep going." Uh, so he's letting us run. Uh, Chris Adair, uh, and she's she's got a long history of being involved here from choir to the social ministry team. Uh, Courtney Krieger, uh, I think, is Courtney our youngest one? Nobody's confessing. I'll, I'll give it to Courtney. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this. Did you know that, uh, that Courtney has an interest uh, in uh, going to seminary? Uh, she's very talented. I know that, yes. So, yeah. Uh, Doug Thone, is... Is Doug, is he Thone or Thane? Because he's a German. He's Doug. He's Doug. Yeah, because I'm an O-E too. And I know how to pronounce it. It's A sound. So I don't know if he yeah. does that. Anyway, he's a lot of fun to have in the group. Uh, Jonathan Levine, uh, Tim Gaffney, our council president, Pastor Kristen Rice, uh, and myself. So it's a, it's a pretty big group. Um, and uh, we're having a good time with that. And you, you forgot to mention the other very redeeming quality dave has which is he fixes our grammar oh yeah he does <laughs> <laughs> when we're writing something up he's he's our proofreader too so he he holds a very yeah. key role i yeah i have to honors. say i like to bait people like that because i intentionally use words like funner <laughs> <laughs> because it's funner <laughs> You're going to make some people very twitchy. I know. I know. <laughs> Myself included. I, I actually have a, a really good friend who's one of the nation's top linguists. And she says, don't worry, Dan. It's all right. Language is flexible. It can become that if you keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on a mission to make life funner. Uh, so um, uh, let's try uh like i wanted to do something to talk about the survey to talk about this but also to talk about yourself right so um tell me about like let, oh this is kind of fun right uh -oh. uh, yeah <laughs> um what's the most embarrassing thing that you have ever witnessed hopefully not at all saints at a church we can throw in church camp or something like that. Uh, what's the most embarrassing? Uh, I, I once almost threw up on somebody when I was giving them Holy Communion. I actually literally had to choke it back because I, it was really hot in the room and I was sweaty. And I took too big a gulp of the wine beforehand and boom, it bounced right back up. So that that was my second most embarrassing one. <laughs> 
Lovely. Is it, is it a moment that we've have or we've seen? It could be. It's easier if it's like your, your spouse. You can tell on them. No, <laughs> no baiting on that one. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's what's something that's happened at church that was like cringe worthy for you? Well, okay. So when my uh, I have two stories, but it's I see. Yeah, yeah. A parent in church and having the kids, but I I want to preface it with I actually love it when there's kids in worship and i would never ever want to take them out even when they do these things but you, as a parent you, you sometimes go oh my god service is dead without the kids in there yeah i know i yeah. oh it's so important to me to have the kids in worship but um that said the first one was my oldest we were having we were at a church in paradise valley ascension lutheran and we were members there and the uh, pastor was raising the bread and it was they used like a giant wafer for the uh, communion for um, the uh, words of institution and as she was breaking the bread my daughter goes it's the jesus cookie <laughs> <laughs> and she wanted her jesus cookie <laughs> And uh, that particular uh, church would commune anybody at any age. And so he was uh, really excited for the cookie. Oh, that's um, sweet. I like that one. It was really loud. I mean, the whole, it, the congregation heard it. It, it wasn't subtle. <laughs> the pastor laughed everybody. Um, and then there was another one. My husband and I, uh, well, my husband hasn't joined the choir at All Saints at this point yet, but my my background, my parents are both uh, music teachers and they've been music ministers. And so I've grown up doing all kinds of music ministry. Um, and so at our last church, we had a really small choir. So we really made my husband um, actually participate. So my kids would have to sit by themselves sometimes. Uh-huh. And uh, sometimes they would sit up because the choir, it was up on the dais kind of thing. And so sometimes they would sit with us, um, but Oftentimes they were sitting by themselves and my youngest, I think she was two or three at the time and she was sitting there and the choir piece, we were singing the anthem and it was this really uplifting, fun musical piece. And she got out of the pew and there was nothing I could do. She went to the front of the church and danced her little heart out. <laughs> and. I had so many people tell me how wonderful it was that she did that, but you know, my mom brain is going. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, not truly embarrassing. And I've, I've sung, I've messed up a lot of, I've done a, a lot of worship leading and um, assisting minister positions and stuff over my years. And I just go with it's church. If, if there's one place that they're supposed to forgive you for screwing up, it's church. So, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Or so forgive you or crucify you. We have both options. <laughs> I'm going with forgive you. That's what okay, I tell good, you. Good, good. Anybody's been like, oh, I'm so scared to do something in church. I'm like, they're going to forgive you if you screw up. It's okay. I'm just reminding you the church does have a history of burning people at the stake too. So be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the forgiving, loving God. All right, good. <laughs> How about the, you guys? Anybody, anybody got anything? Well, I have a I have a philosophy. It's it's only awkward if you make it awkward. So ah. I'm 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 my wife goes, Wow, that's that's special about you. So I'm very rarely embarrassed on things because um no, nothing juicy like that. Nothing, you know, most of it's kids related where it's just I think it's funny. I think it's great because I, I think that the kids when 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 they when they say some of the comments, they speak from the heart and that's what uh, that's, and we lose that as we get older, where we lose the the yeah. speaking from the heart and speaking that just that the, it, it, it makes me laugh and it brings a smile to my face. And I, I think it's great. So okay. I wouldn't change those stories for the world. Oh, exactly. That's Having my fun. kids in worship with us has been yeah. a priority for my husband since day one. Yeah. Or my husband and I since day one. So but I think that's so much fun. I going up there and dancing her heart out. That's we need and, and Matthew, we need I'm that. feeling that, that right now the most embarrassing thing was being on a coffee with Pastor Dan. 
<laughs> it's up there. No, uh, I go to the wrong services apparently because I just have me running around after my children. Maybe there are really embarrassing things that happen, but uh, I I have four kids and I'm often chasing one through four of them. So I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe I'm just missing it. Maybe I'm looking the other way because I don't have any good stories. <laughs> All right, all right. So let's go. That was from the silly to the let's go super deep. Okay. Uh, to be relevant for our kids when they're our age. Okay. By the time our kids are our age, what do you think the church has to really learn how to do to get them to be excited? Uh, about being a, in, a, in a church. Oh, that's a tough one. What do you guys think? I, I think about this a lot because my kids are, my son is uh, just turned 30 and my daughter's 27, you know, and, you know, um, you know, what will church mean for them when they're 60? You know, and while, while will it be something that is meaningful for them as it is for me right now? So um, what do you guys think about that? I think one of the things that the church, um, I've thought a lot about this. That's why I joined the strategic planning team. It's like, how do we get, how do we stop losing kids at 18 and, and then only having them come back at 60, right? 18, you're being them? optimistic. It's more I, like, like like 13. Yeah. So, yeah. But how do, how do we do that, right? And one thing that's just really struck me every time I think about this is um, uh, my kids have friends of very diverse ethnic, cultural, and sexual backgrounds, right? Um, but I don't, I don't often see that when I walk into not just All Saints, but any church, right? They're all fairly, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Hetero, 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 homogeneous? Yeah, homogeneous. That's it. Homogeneous. Not, I was going the wrong way. Heterosexual. Uh, it is pretty <laughs> every heterosexual. Right? It's, it's too confusing. Well, yeah. Hetero, yeah, whatever. We won't go into that. Um, uh, but so That's by the okay. way, they, they say that, uh, and, and I, it really is, I think, true that that Sunday mornings are the most segregated time in American culture. Well, and I and I think that's one of the one of the things that needs to change. Now, how do you change something that big? That's not what you ask. So, no, but I mean, it, yeah, the question is, you know, where what's something that we see off in the distance well, that we can, well, yeah, you know, I think I think kind of going well, like the baby steps of this is, yeah. is really is continuing to build on a welcoming environment yeah. for people who walk through the door yeah. and making people feel really welcome when they're there and acknowledging that if you see somebody new, instead of saying, hey, you're in my seat, because um, <laughs> I didn't know there was assigned seating. I found out very quickly that if you, if you take your seat. And by the and way, I'm move, the most guilty of all. I always sit in the same seat. <laughs> yes, you do. So, but I think, I think what we could really do as part of this is, as we're identifying the different directions and the different things and, and analyzing some th and analyzing these different really goals and objectives is continue to have a very welcoming and friendly setting. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, when, when kids start moving, you know, it's, my kids are, are starting to get to the age where I, I, I cherish it every day because they still want to hang around with dad. Um, there's going to be a point where they're going to be like, dad, <laughs> just, yeah. And I'm, and I'm, you know, I know it's going to happen, but I think having an environment where you feel that you can bring somebody in and there's welcoming and, and, and acceptance is yeah. something that we can all do. And I know we, we talk about that. That's what we want to have. But I mean, if you, if you've experienced it, where looking through, looking through this journey through the eyes of an outsider, which is very difficult because our, our, you know, you go in and there's stories of 15, 16, 7, 20 plus years, 30 plus year members, but, you know, you're coming in for the first time and maybe just having that welcome, having somebody that's, hey, you're, you're new here. Let's grab a cup of coffee and a donut after this and let's talk. Let me introduce you. Let me introduce you to some, to some folks that are around here. And that, I think that's the, just the, the infancy of the steps of, of continuing to grow. Uh, and you know, it, it, wouldn't it be great if there was a cultural complaint, you know, 30 years from now yeah. that those Christians, they're just too tolerant. Yeah. <laughs> they're, too, they're too welcoming and nice. Yeah. They welcomed us. How dare All those they? Churches are so inviting. Uh, yeah. They're so inviting. <laughs> um, be amazing. 
Yeah. yeah. But I, I really think it just starts with it just, just the getting back to some basics. And yeah. I think that that's going to, I think we've, as, as a, in a, as just a church community wise, um, we've lost our, we've lost some of the basics and yeah. it's, and it's, you know, how can we keep folks here? How can we keep kids here getting, you know, keeping, making sure that they're welcome and let them know that, Hey, you're welcome to stick around here after 13 and what? not come back at 60. You, you're actually welcome from like 13 on because you've been here from zero <laughs> to 13. Yeah, Why don't we just continue here whenever. Exactly. Yeah. Think about so many stories in the Bible. Jesus is talking to his fellow religious people. And one of his biggest things are, why do you keep pushing people away and judging them? And, and so in some ways, it's elemental in terms of when we gather together as spiritual people, this is going to be on our back. Uh, and, uh, and maybe every generation has to find a way to push back against that. You know, uh, you know, I don't think it was just unique to Jesus day and our day, you know? So how about for you, Chris, when, when you're, when your daughter is your, your sons, your, your daughters uh, are, are your age, what, what do you think the church needs to be for them? First of all, uh, I agree completely with Matt and with Robert and what's been said. Um, but to add to it, what I personally believe is um, important in raising our kids in faith so that they are that they want to remain a part of the church community. Um, I feel blessed enough that that was how I was raised, and we've I've I've never been without a church home, never been without worshiping, and I I know I'm a unique case. Uh, in a sense, I, at least that's what I've been told. <laughs> but I think that that a lot of that came from the modeling of my parents and yeah. my, and the community around me. And I feel like as we have people that are coming back to the church um, and it's educating the parents on how to partner with their children making certain parents know it's okay that their kids are in worship and go up and dance around and do crazy things and not be embarrassed by it and know that they're welcome to have their kids and bring them to everything. And as they learn that, they'll continue to model the behavior of participating in worship and participating in activities, extended activities at the church. And so um, I think intergenerational activities are absolutely crucial and having um again always having the kids part of whatever you're doing that's a big thing for me we were always so blessed to be a part of whatever was going on um and getting to do cool things with the you know grown-ups and knowing that even as a kid we were a valued member of the church and but to continue to support that through all ages and stages and then like i said as the parents are as people are coming back that maybe left teaching them how to model that for their kids. And I think actually All Saints has done a great job of being on that road. Um, you know, talking to confirmation leaders recently, we know that uh, there's a group of kids that have had it, their parent, you know, their parents came in and they've been there through the preschool, through the everything, through the Sunday school programs and All Saints has partnered alongside them. And I just, it's, it's impressive to me. Like I said, I've been at a lot of churches I've seen a lot of different things um, and All Saints has amazing programs going on. You know, I, I think there's a um, there's kind of a bad rap around intergenerational, which sounds like uh, we need parents to sit with their kids while we teach the kids. And you guys, please don't text while we're doing that. <laughs> I mean, that's the bad rap for intergenerational. Mm -hmm. When what you're describing is also what I was blessed to hear, like right now at 60, I find increasingly that I am consciously pulling up uh, people who, who were there for me when I was young who are now dead. And I remember these, these people that were so precious to me. Uh, and I try to remember things they may have said to me. And conversely, I, I cherish when I meet somebody young, like this, I mentioned the refugee kids. So that there's, there's these two boys, they've just come from Somalia uh, and uh, they're sitting on their mom's lap and they're a little bit nervous that all these people have come over to their new place in this new country. 
and they're four and five. And I spent, you know, like, um, well, all the, all the adults in the room were, were talking about all the, the things that need to be done and working through the translator. They handed me one of the stuffed animals they had gotten, which they obviously was the best thing they had gotten since they came here. And so we spent like 15 minutes playing around with the stuffed animals. And I, and I have a picture of them. And I'm thinking like, you know, one of these kids is going to be a senator someday. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and I'm going to be there at that point helping them to make this country their home and it's like you you feel this maybe it's this midlife crisis 60 thing but you <laughs> really get a much more of a knowledge that your life flows from people that were before you were born uh and it'll flow beyond people after you that to me is intergenerational it's exactly what you were describing Kristen. is yeah. You know, we keep people in just little age silos. That doesn't happen, you know. Uh, or we say, no, you have to be with your family. You know, uh, I, I was privileged to play with those kids for 15 minutes while mom got to learn how to use the laundry, you know. Yeah. So. Well, I, again, I think continuing to have education for all ages, but at, at, at different, I mean, it's important to have groups, you know, where... Yes group or you've got a young adult group or, you know, different ages gathering together, that's important too. But um, having that time where they can see, kids especially can see the, mo the model behavior. I mean, you, who is it that says that uh, uh, the church is caught more than taught kind of thing? I think that was Winston Churchill. Okay, I, I don't know. I've just heard it a lot, and I it always gets quoted for everything. So it's quoted for everything, but it's absolutely true. And you know, I what was modeled for me is what we try to model for my kids, and my, and my parents still try. I mean, you if you've seen us at church, quite frankly, really, you'll see my parents there because they're what they're doing is jumping from my our church to worship with their grandkids there, and then my brother's church to worship with their grandkids. Oh there. wow. So right now they're actually not really members anywhere, but they're circling the valley um, to worship with their their kids and their grandkids as best as they can, so they can continue to model that for. Tell us. them this: do the survey with us. You um, want them to do the survey? Okay. I want them to do the survey because uh, they are very invested in their children and their grandchildren having a future, yeah. and I think they're thinking deeply about this. And we want anybody who's really invested for what the future of our church will be to be part of that survey so tell them to do the survey so, absolutely i yeah. will they'll be happy to <laughs> um boy i think that was pretty good um i think we should talk give a little bit more plug for vbs uh and i'm, I'm just asking people to pray for it because uh it, we don't we got our volunteers we got our paper mache going up and all that kind of stuff um but to pray for for that um and we'll pray for it right now. Anything else that we should be praying for, guys? What if you want to do it? Is there anybody, I don't know, like in California who wants to do it? <laughs> <laughs> for this person away, I guess, too. <laughs> this, this is like our punishment for you for you being at a beautiful location. Beautiful beach. And yeah, beautiful we location. believe in prayer as punishment here. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> So that goes back to the instead of it being you know we we're we're being supportive to put you at the cruise. Up. <laughs> so there's something with cruise. Yeah, there's I, I, feel I like still have between those two. Um, I, st I still have the old skills. The old yes. skills. <laughs> well, well, I'm I I, I a couple of things. I think we should you know pray for our group, but also yeah. uh, the the VBS and and the, for our kids here. So, um, see, so yeah, I'll, I'll I'll throw it out there. So. You don't really uh, have to, but it'd be great if you did. Well, you know what? I think I think you're the better. You're, you know, you are better at this. It is, it is something that you do for a living. So <laughs> I'd be honored to do it if you would like me to. Please. <laughs> All right. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you that uh, we are part of this uh, great chain of the faith that goes so many lives before us and after us, and uh, we pray uh, for. Uh, vacation Bible school that there'll be just amazing memories 
uh, uh, and deep lessons about love and life and truth uh, that will uh, just echo and, and resound well beyond our lifespans. And uh, we also ask you to bless this congregation. Um, we know we're just one of, of thousands of churches here in Phoenix, yet you have a purpose for each congregation. So we pray, Lord, not only that you would give us a clear discernment of what we should do, but that we will see how we are working in connection with what you're doing in so many places and in so many ways with the people around us. Uh, bless everybody that's on this committee, uh, and may they walk away uh, with a, uh, a deep feeling of being used by your hand to bring goodness and love to the world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so I will tell you now my most embarrassing story for anybody who's still listening. <laughs> so, it was one of my first, I think my first year of preaching. And I kept, I preached from the pulpit in those days. And I kept the my Bible and the, and the paper lower down in the pulpit. Uh, and I put the paper up there and at a certain point, I wanted to pull out the Bible to read something from the Bible. And I didn't realize that a kind and considerate person had placed a glass of water right there. So when I went for the Bible, I knocked over a glass of water, which just happened to be about waist high. <laughs> so I was I was forced to preach till I was dry. <laughs> so that so was you were, it must have been the summer and you weren't roped? Well, I was I was robed, but it was a nice big wet spot from the crowd. Okay, down. I was gonna say maybe the the white all would have covered. No, nah, no, water shows up just nice on that. So that's <laughs> I, I I could have had Rob's attitude, but no, I just preached myself dry. So so next time I'm going on too long for the sermon, say he's preaching himself dry again. <laughs> I was going to say, this explains so much. It does. It does. So, all right. God bless you guys. I'm going to sign us off here. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, you guys hold on. I'm just going to stop oh. recording. <laughs>